Hi everyone, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee as we take a look at the radar. This is at uh, as of midnight on uh, Saturday morning and we've got Hurricane Matthew just offshore uh, the northern Georgia southwestern corner of South Carolina and I just want to make a couple of observations here. One is that the system is becoming less organized. Uh, if you look at the eye uh, it's actually completely open in the uh, southeastern quadrant. And in fact, there's very little precipitation going on in the southeastern eastern quadrant at all. Most of the rain uh, has ended in northern Florida, except for this one band that's uh, moving southeastward and kind of fizzling out as it does so. But we do have a concentration of uh, very heavy rains that continue to sweep in westward uh, into the coastline, into Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, here's I-95. You can see it right there. And, uh, you know, it was right in this band that we're getting some uh, very strong wind gusts. Uh, you know, we'll check those in just a second. I'm going to jump up to the to uh, a little further north to the Charleston radar. And you can see the extent of the rain <clears throat> has uh, moved pretty far inland, um, you know, pretty far west. And this is uh, what what's been happening. As the system moves further north and gets less organized, it's getting more and more spread out. So the rain shield continues to expand westward. And so does the area of uh, gales. Uh, the uh, stronger winds are penetrating a little further inland, um, kind of thinning it out in a sense where you're not getting the concentration of really, really strong winds along the coast. You are getting some good strong wind gusts, but unlike in Florida where the band was fairly narrow, you're starting to see some wind gusts uh, a little bit further to the west, and we'll check those in just a second. Uh, we'll go uh, north to the Wilmington radar in uh, North Carolina, and they're more on the northern fringe. So some of that rain has moved uh, into the interior of North Carolina. It goes in pretty far north and west, but you don't see uh, the eye on this particular radar. The range doesn't go far down enough. I have uh, an enhanced <clears throat> satellite view. And uh, we'll stop it here for one second. And I want to just show you, you know, here, here's probably the core of the enhancement. You know, I think maybe I better pick another color. Let's do the, um, let's do green, I think, because that, that'll stand out. But here's, here's a little bit of a core of cold cloud tops right there. And then you have uh, the area here in yellow that, that, that goes out in terms of cloud cover. But we saw on the radar that there really isn't, very much going on precip wise uh, to the southeast and the other thing I've noticed when you look at the loop if you follow you know the, the blue dot is probably where that's probably where the eye is um, the track has been north but it looks like in the last few frames it's turning a little bit more to the northeast so we'll just loop it again and you can just follow it along there and it looks like you know maybe starting to jog a little bit more uh, uh, north northeast it was uh, still moving north on the last advisory but this is important because we've actually yet to see the eye come ashore we've seen the eye wall get you know close to shoreline but the eye has not actually penetrated land now it's possible if it stays on this northeast course that it could penetrate land somewhere along the coast here in South Carolina uh, but um, you know we'll have to just watch it and see as we uh, go through the overnight hours now when we check some of the winds Hilton Head, I saw some gusts into the 50s. Uh, these change uh, th these these change through the hour, so we may get some updates in a little while. But, you know, we've had some gusts of 45. Uh, as we go right near the Georgia border, uh, I can't see the name of the island here, uh, but uh, they're, gust they're sustained 45 with gusts of 53. When we move a little further south, there's not really a whole lot of observation points until you get down uh, further south into uh, Georgia and a little closer to the border of Florida. So we've got northwest winds here at uh, 20 at 30 knots, some gusts into the 40s. Um, we'll uh, let the map load there and I'll move it inland. See what we get some you know some gusts of 47 as you go you know further uh, north and west in, into uh, Jessup uh, and uh, even a gust of 56 up here in Clawton in uh, South Carolina and some gusts up into the 40s. So you can see how the the wind sh the, um, the the windshield has actually <clears throat> penetrated west of I-95 
with some gusty winds. And when we go up uh, a little closer to the uh, North Carolina border, uh, you can see there's wind gusts here in the 50s, 51, uh, 30, 25 sustained gusting to 51, 35 sustained gusting to 51 as we approach the North Carolina border. And, you know, you're probably seeing also some gusty winds that are going to pick up. Uh, it's a little less here. All these winds, by the way, here you, ha you have some east winds and they're northeast winds. Uh, as you go down the coastline, there's an offshore report here of 40 sustained gusting to 54 from the east northeast. So, so, you know, if this were going to come inland, we'd, we'd have to start seeing these winds turn more southeasterly. Now, here's an east wind at 56. And a, and a north northeast wind at Hilton Head. So uh, I'm guessing that uh, the center of the, of the storm, or at least the, the edge of the eye wall, is somewhere like this. Okay, and it's not circular either. It's probably distorted a little bit. Uh, so you're getting east winds here, and then you're getting the uh, north northeast winds uh, coming down. Um, kind of messing it up here with the pen, but you can see here you get the winds going more north northeast. And, you know, here we're probably getting more southeast to east winds, but the, the, the actual center is probably somewhere out, out there. So uh, everything seems to be moving according to what models have indicated, where it would just sort of straddle the coastline. Um, let's uh, take a look at what the models are showing, and we'll start with the GFS model. And it takes it just about on shore and then begins to move it east. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky because, you know, we do have a weather front here, and there are some of the, um, there's a lot of confusion tonight in terms of what some of the models do with Matthew. Some of them actually merge it with the frontal zone and that, and then basically take it east-northeast or even northeast toward the Maritimes. Uh, that's been indicated. Um, when we move it along, we have, um, the GFS doing that southward turn, and there you see right here we have it um, with Nicole, and here's Nicole right there. That's Nicole, and I'll put a little N. Okay, and it all it looks like Matthew circulation gets completely entrained there um, with Nicole, and in fact uh, there are even some models that suggest that Nicole winds up absorbing Matthew. In this uh, particular run, we do see the GFS keeping Matthew as a separate entity, dropping it back down into the Bahamas. But uh, the circulation here between the two systems, very, very close. So, you know, this is just kind of, uh, this, this is uh, going to be very tricky going on in the next 36 hours to, uh, beyond to see uh, what's going to happen. I'll show you the hurricane models. And you can, uh, from tonight, the spaghetti plaza, and you can see all the confusion uh, you've got uh, a couple of models that take it actually inland in, in just west of the coast, bring it out offshore, and then move it northeastward. This one takes it into the Canadian Maritimes. This one takes it south of Nova Scotia. Uh, then you have a couple of others that do um, sort of the same thing, where you have uh, it takes it out eastward and then turns it northeastward and races it up toward Nova Scotia or a little bit further out. Then you have some that take it straight east, and then you have the collection of models that orchestrate the loop. So it, it's it's really a huge range in terms of of what could happen here uh, with regards to Hurricane Matthew once it clears the Carolinas. Now, I, I just want to uh, go back uh, to this the satellite picture and just indicate one of the one of the uh, results of this is because you have you know all these east winds coming in that are getting some pretty significant uh, storm surge uh, surges that are going on even down into Florida with the northerly wind the water is getting funneled down so you're getting some some uh, very uh, some huge surge issues um, I saw some video uh, from earlier today at one of the high tides and the water was all the way up at the top of the beach in in, in um, Folly Beach in, in South Carolina uh, and this is before even the hurricane got there so uh, the next high tide coming up uh, this morning it's going to be very interesting to see what transpires. So uh, we'll continue to monitor this. One last check of the radar before we go. I'll just update it for you, and we'll move southward so we can get a better view of the eye. And here's Charleston, so it's kind of on the edge here. So we're going to have to go down to the Jacksonville, Florida radar, where you can see the eye here. 
it's you know still offshore I, i'm really thinking it's moving maybe uh, a little more north northeast now instead of due north but if if, if i'm wrong uh you're going to see that that eye wall uh, coming on shore uh during uh, the early morning hours or or you know whether it penetrates and goes inland or not i don't know but right now it's awfully close uh with um the, the eye right here but again look as you go through the frames you see how it gets more and more open uh the southeastern quadrant is just wide open here there's nothing going on in terms of precip and and there's apps a big void of precip all down here so you're getting this comma shape look which is a sign that it's getting less organized so uh, there you have it uh <clears throat> the latest on hurricane matthew Let, maybe just a quick uh See if the GFS added a couple more frames here that we can take a look. And no, it doesn't only go, go we're only out <clears throat> to the middle of next week. So the cold is still around. And we've got the next uh, cold front that's uh, approaching here like that. Well, we can uh, maybe even take a look at the upper air. I'm making this longer and longer. Sorry, guys. Um, let's go to the upper air and see if we can uh, figure that out a little bit. Let me just move this up a little so you can get get down. To the uh, upper air charts. No, nope, it's not letting me. Let's. Well, seem to be having a problem here, Houston. Let's try from the top. Oh, I know why. Because I have the picture frozen. Is it frozen still? Let's see. Well, it doesn't seem to want to. Nope. Let me try it one more time. There I go. Now. I have the GFS. There we now we got it. It's been a very long week, folks. I'm really tired. You can see the, the uh, trough that's coming through is right here. You know, if it were just a, if it was a little bit sharper and a little further west, it would have picked it up. And there's Matthew, but it's not doing it. And uh, it, it's there's just enough of an influence here. So when I look at this, in my own my own opinion, it's kind of hard for me to envision how it doesn't get picked up. But some for some reason, maybe it's the pulling of Nicole that keeps it from uh, picking up, that the trough kind of gets stretched out here. So we'll just leave it there. We'll wait till tomorrow. We'll wait till the daytime on Saturday to see what it holds. Don't forget, SS Storm Chasers is on the, on the move uh, along the coast of the Carolinas and, uh, they're taking some great pictures. You can check it out on their, on their Facebook page as, as storm chasing, uh, on Facebook and, uh, their website, ssstormchasers.com. And of course you'll get all the latest, um, weather and model analysis and so on on meteorologist, Joe Chaffee.com and the local weather for, uh, New York city, NYC weather now.com. And for long Island, it's, it's, uh, I you know I forgot. <laughs> I'm really I'm really having a tough day. Just check uh, just just check out those other, those websites, and I'll uh, we'll see you on uh, later later in the day on uh, Saturday.